हेलो गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स प्लीज सब्सक्राइब द चैनल ड्रॉप अ लाइक शेयर एंड कमेंट दिस इज श्री विष्णु आर्ट प्रेस पब्लिकेशंस एक्सरसाइज नंबर सेवन एंड एट ऑन द स्पीड ऑफ नाइन्टी वर्ड्स पर मिनट स्टार्ट लर्न काउंसिल फॉर द एपेलेंट आर्ग्यूड दैट द इम्प्यूड ऑर्डर्स आर लाइबल टू बी सेट असाइड because the district forums did not have the jurisdiction to entertain the complaints filed by the respondents and the state and national commissions committed grave error by brushing aside the appellants objections to the maintainability of the complaints learned counsel emphasized that the seeds act is a special legislation enacted for regulating the quality of seeds and if the respondents had any grievance about the quality of the seeds then the only remedy available to them was to either file an application under section 10 of the seeds act or to approach the concerned seed inspectors for taking action under section 19 read with section 21 of that act they further argued that even if the complaints filed by the respondents under the consumer act are held to be maintainable the finding recorded by the district forums that the seeds sold or supplied by the appellant were defective is liable to be set aside because the procedure prescribed under section 131c of the consumer act was not followed learned counsel relied upon section 8 of the arbitration and conciliation act 1996 and argued that in view of the arbitration clause contained in the agreements entered between the appellant and the growers the latter could have applied for arbitration and the consumer forums should have non suited them in view of section 8 of the arbitration and conciliation act 1996 an ancillary argument made by the learned counsel is that the growers of seeds cannot be treated as consumer within the meaning of section 2d of the act learned counsel for the respondents supported the impugned orders and argued that the district forums did not commit any illegality by entertaining the complaints filed under the consumer act because the seeds act and the rules framed there under do not contain any provision for compensating a farmer whose crop is lost or who does not get the expected yield if the seeds sold or supplied by the appellant are defective learned counsel submitted that the remedy available under the consumer act is in addition to other remedies available to a consumer and the complaints filed by the respondents under that act cannot be held as bad merely because they could also approach the seed inspector for taking action under section 19 read with section 21 of the seeds act learned counsel further argued that the growers of seeds are covered by the definition of consumer because they had agreed to undertake cultivation of seeds 
on behalf of the appellant for earning livelihood on the issue of non compliance of section 13 1c of the consumer act learned council submitted that the district forums had rightly relied upon the reports of the court commissioners and other evidence for recording findings that the seeds sold or supplied by the appellant were defective learned council emphasized that the respondents had used the entire quantity of seeds purchased by them for sowing and they had not retained samples by anticipating loss of crop or less yield once the order of dismissal dated 3rd january 2003 had been passed the high court should not have directed continuation and conclusion of the departmental proceedings pursuant to another charge sheet relating to embezzlement of funds irregular payments missing vouchers etc on the said aspect the learned division bench and the single judge in the orders under challenge have rightly observed that there cannot be two orders of dismissal yet have earnestly commented upon the inquiry report and the second order of dismissal dated 25th october 2013 this second order of dismissal should have been set aside on the limited ground and reason that there cannot be two orders of dismissal leaving it open to the appellant to take steps and recommence proceedings in the charge sheet relating to embezzlement of funds irregular payments and missing vouchers etc should the first order of dismissal dated 3rd january 2003 be set aside in other words departmental proceedings wide the charge sheet relating to embezzlement irregular payments and missing vouchers etc should for the present be kept in abeyance reference in this regard can be made to the judgment of the court in state of up versus vijay kumar agarwal and an other 2016 3scc 197 wherein it has been held that the employee who has already been dismissed from service cannot be imposed any other penalty on the conclusion of inquiry pertaining to the charge sheet dated 6/7/1988 therefore at this stage no purpose is going to be served to continue with the inquiry into the said charge sheet at the same time it is also to be borne in mind that respondent 1 has challenged dismissal order and the matter is pending before the tribunal in case the said dismissal is set aside by the tribunal and or the high court or this court and respondent one is reinstated in service as a result thereof the relationship of employer employee between the parties shall also stand restored in that eventuality it would be permissible for the appellant to proceed with the inquiry relating to charge sheet dated 67/1988 accordingly the present appeal is partly allowed whereby we agree that the second order of dismissal dated 25th october 2013 could not have been passed and accordingly 
we would set aside all observations and findings recorded by the division bench and single judge with regard to the inquiry report dated 28th may 2012 with the direction that further proceedings pursuant to the said inquiry report would be kept in abeyance and can be recommenced in case the first dismissal order dated 3rd january 2003 is set aside and quashed in case of recommencement it will be open to the first respondent to raise objections to the inquiry report before the disciplinary authority who would consider the said objections it would be equally open to the disciplinary authority who would consider the said objections it would be equally open to the disciplinary authority to rectify and correct mistakes or lapses if any and proceed in accordance with law we have not made any observation on the merits of the inquiry report or the procedure which has to be followed